On today's show, who has the most to prove on the Dallas Mavericks? It's Clay Thompson. We'll tell you why on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. You are Locked On Mavs. Great, Rusty. Your daily Dallas Mavericks podcast. No one's dying. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Amazing. Your team every day. Still can't even build and welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day asking day 70 to change the intro back. Thanks for making us part of your day, <laughs> listening to this show, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform. Leave a five-star review. Take us with you. Like the video on YouTube and comment anything below. Anything except for about the intro. Comment below. Who has the most to prove on the Mavs next season? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stops sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And joining me, the incomparable, the eternal optimist from Valley Sports. What you got for me, Dana Larson? Oh, I, I leave for a few weeks and everything changes. Everything <laughs> changes. Even the music. I like it though. I'm on board. I won't leave you any negative comments. <laughs> uh, the comments will still come. I know yeah. that they still will. I know they still no. will. It happens every time. That's all right. It is so good. Wasn't to be my back. choice. It's- that's all right. You have to follow the rules. We understand. We understand. Yes. This is, this is a job so, now. Yes, this is a job right. now. This is, it used to be fun. Now it's a job. <laughs> Dana, right. who, tri- who tricked exactly. me into doing this? <laughs> That's how I felt today when I realized you were forcing me to put makeup on during my high <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not supposed you. to happen. That's too funny. <laughs> today, we're going to talk about the players on the Mavericks that have the most to prove going into next season. So we'll talk about all the new guys, all three of the new guys, what they have to prove. We'll talk about some of the Mavs players that they have. Uh, I may talk about a star player that has some stuff to prove, but we've got to start with a former all-star, former all defensive player, a champion in his own right, and literally <laughs> Clay Thompson, Dana. I think he has the most to prove next season because he's kind of admitted it. Like he's kind of admitted coming in that I have a lot to prove to myself, to the you know the rest of the league, to everyone, because the end of the Golden State Warriors run for Clay Thompson was disappointing. It wasn't what he wanted. And he, you could see the frustration on it. We talked with Kylan Mills of, of Lockdown Warriors about how you could just see the frustration in him, the way that he would, you know, hit chairs or, or walls or, you know, just be like, be frustrated with himself and see that I think the most that he has to prove is maybe not even to the league or to the Mavs or to other teams. It's probably to himself. Oh, I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it is, it is almost like ironic, right? A guy who has four rings yeah. and, you know, is going to be fifth on the all-time threes list, you know, as soon as we get into this season, a few months into this season, right? And we're talking about a guy that has something to prove. It feels like he has nothing to prove at this point in his career. He's done so much, but that's what's so cool about this is the fact that, and I think he used those words. He said, sometimes breakups are necessary to do what's right, right? I thought that was so, so interesting to kind of get a look into where he, he is in his head. Um, we heard, you know, Steph Curry say he hopes Clay Thompson can just find the joy in basketball again. So, yes, I think that there was a need for him to have a bit of a fresh start to sort of what I like to think here is this is just going to be a rejuvenation of this, you know, Hall of Fame career and how great to do it in a Dallas Mavericks uniform because, um, you know, there he's got so much there and he has so much he's going to bring to this team and the fit feels really, really good. But can he do it without Steph? Can he do it without the Warriors? Can he do it at this age? Can he do it after two massive injuries? Can he defend? Can he sacrifice? You know, can he still be left open? Right. So there's lots and lots of questions. Right. And that's where he is just going to come up and he's going to try day after day to to prove all those things wrong right that he has all of that to prove um and i think that's why you're gonna the mavs are gonna get him at a great place in his career Mm. and hopefully you know in in his mental state 
Yeah, and they're not asking him to do a lot either. Like, he's the one asking himself to do the most, I think. The Mavericks have him in this very unique position of, all right, you expect a lot out of yourself. You expect yourself to prove all these things that, that you just mentioned. But we just want you to come. Like, we just want you right. to go out there to hit a bunch of open threes that we're going to get for you between the, the attention that Luca and Kyrie get to defend in our scheme that isn't super taxing on, like, you know, it, he doesn't have to just lock up a, the star player and chase them around screens all the time. There's a lot of switching and rotating, and you got to communicate and all that. And it can be taxing on on star players like Luca and, and Kyrie. But on a role player like like Clay, like he may come to this scheme and go, "Oh man, like this is a lot easier than than it used to be, where I just had to lock up the guy in front of me all the time." And I, I think that the Mavs putting him in that position is going to help him a lot. He also doesn't count that much against the the, the like the salary cap. I think he's like ten percent of the salary cap, which is you know different than what the Mavs dealt with with Tim Hardaway Jr., where there are the you know the money and the the salary cap percentage and the expectations were higher than what he could deliver. I think it's the complete opposite with Clay Thompson, which is why I think he's able to prove some of these things that he wants to. You're saying the bar is almost low. The bar is almost low for Clay Thompson. I mean, that, you know, that's for a me. really, that's a really, really interesting way to look at it because that, and I think you're right. Cause he said expectations are high, but the high expectations are coming from the fact that Nico Harrison said they were a Clay Thompson away yeah. from winning an NBA championship. So it, it, on one hand, I get what you're saying. On the other, things like that are being said. And Clay is going to internalize that. He's going to put that on his shoulders. He's going to want to be the guy that gets them over that hump. And it, it, you saw how hard it is just to get to the finals. Yeah. Now to win, you know, it, that it's not going to be easy, right? And so it's maybe there's going to be a, a, some – sort of battle of the expectations and one day everybody's going to be on the same page with it. And maybe some days they aren't. If they don't win the finals, no one's going to, they're not going to blame clay, right? They come, it still is going to come down to Luca and Kyrie. That, that's what it will always come down to this past year. The Mavs, you know, go in the finals and, and PJ Washington didn't shoot that well in the finals and Derek Jones jr. Didn't have, you know, it still came down to Luca and Kyrie. It was Kyrie couldn't show up in Boston, and it was Luca was injured and wasn't himself. I think it'll be the same whether Clay's like you know whether Clay's starting games at the end of the season, closing games at the end of the season or not. I don't think that like Nico Harrison did say that that Clay that we were Clay away, but it's still going to be on those two guys, those two stars. I think, and uh, and yeah, I think that the expectations will still will still be on them. The pressure will still be on them and all that. And I think that uh, that'll help Clay. That'll help Clay. If, you know, if maybe he internalizes that that pressure, and maybe that's something that you need. You know, I don't. Have you seen Inside Out too? Have you seen that that yeah, movie? Oh, I have. It they introduced wonderful. the new. Yep. They introduced the new motion anxiety and <laughs> anxiety. Spoiler. Spoiler. It's basically in the trailer. But you need anxiety in your life because you need it to like help you to uh, like not get eaten by bears <laughs> or things like that. Like if <laughs> you see a bear, yeah. <laughs> if you see a bear, you get anxious and you run away and you don't go chase it and hug it because it looks cu like cuddly, right? <laughs> you need that anxiousness in your life. So maybe clay needs some of that, a little bit of a, a, a push and a different thing. Like you said, the breakup breakups are necessary to like start something new, to have a fresh start. And clay's getting that here in Dallas. And I think he's getting a fresh start on his expectations and on his role and what's being asked of him too. The other thing I'd like to think he brings to that maybe he can really embrace as much as, if not more than the shot making, is the experience. The experience mm, that yeah. this team needs big games in deep in playoff runs, right? I mean, this is a guy who um, has like two full seasons of playoff experience. Like if you put it all together, it's literally like yeah. two full seasons, you know, and you're looking at, you know, players like PJ Washington jr. Who, who have 20 games now after this run. Right. And, and one of the things that was talked about a lot was like the, so much of the role players on this team were on this big stage for the first time in their careers. And so, you know, hopefully his experience and his sort of mentorship and guidance for young players and uh, all that will keeping guys calm, keeping guys, you know, sort of in the right headspace. I hope that that's also something he's really, and it sounded like he was, and he's really excited about imparting and bringing, you know, to this team, just as much as we're going to count on you, you know, to, to hit big shots in big games. Um, Cause that's going to be equally as important. 
He has played 158 games in the playoffs. He's also only been like knocked out of the first round one time, and that was in 2014. Isn't that wild right. that anytime they go, they're at least going to make the second round and usually the finals. <laughs> they made it, what, right. five times? Absolutely insane. So coming up, I think a star player has something to prove on the Dallas Mavericks. Kyrie Irving has something to prove to himself, to the Mavs, to everyone in the league. Still, talk about what that is coming up. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of props and odds and things that you can use to get in on the action. I mentioned it earlier. You got the daily boost and bonus every single day. I hope you took whatever prop was there for Caitlin Clark against our Dallas Wings because, holy cow, she broke all of them. Broke literally the record for assists in a a game. Absolutely wild. Now they take the Olympic break, but you have the All-Star game. You can bet on All-Star game MVP. Asia Wilson, plus 550. Sabrina Ionescu, plus 750. She's having a killer season. Brianna Stewart, her teammate, plus 1,000. Uh, Kalia Copper, plus 1,000. Jewel Lloyd, plus 1,000. Uh, Caitlin Clark, plus 1,200. Those, those, pre- those are pretty good odds right there for Caitlin Clark. All kinds of stuff you can bet on the championship. And uh, it's not just WNBA. You have MLB, too. Go check out that. FanDuel.com. See what's available for you. It changes all the time. It changes wherever you are. It changes when uh, new things happen. There's, there's NFL futures props and things like that. Super Bowl odds. Kansas City Chiefs plus 600, 49ers plus 600, tied right there. Check it out, FanDuel.com. Again, check it out at FanDuel.com. Shut it down! Let's go Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for checking out the show. We are going to be daily all throughout the offseason. No show on Monday, but we will be back. Uh, with Reggie Atatula talking about free agency, talking about if the Mavs can add anybody else. So be sure to check back in on that show. Go listen to me and Slightly that sh- yesterday. We talked about um, you know some of the big questions around each player. We talked about the Summer League a little bit. Oh, man, Dana. The Summer League the summer league team is <laughs> it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's a, it's a, Come it's a on, Judd. This, 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 this is a good time to take a break, Dana. <laughs> not watching the Mavs. Let's well, so all step away. Yeah, that's all right. We'll regroup. <laughs> maybe we need you on a, on a post summer league to make us all feel, to make us all feel better about where we are with it. We need, I'm up the, for it. I'm we need for the optimism. It. Gosh, that was, that was a rough watch the other day. Uh, you know, right. Vegas is burning down right now. It's just too hot out there. <laughs> Things just are going right. crazy. That's, that's what it is. The second year I went to summer league, I've been three times. The second year I went to summer league, I was young. I was dumb. I was inexperienced. I did. I did an Airbnb that was within walking distance of the arena. And I was like, Oh, this is so great. I'll save so much money in Ubers because it's so expensive to just oh, Uber everywhere yeah. back and forth. I had, had to walk. It's, it was probably like half a mile in 115 degree heat. 15. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, it's a, it's a dry heat. Don't worry. It's a dry. Yeah. It's dry because you walk outside and at first you feel, okay, I can do this. Cause I'm not immediately sweating. It's not, yeah. there's not humidity. And then you just keep walking. You go, Oh no, I'm baking. I'm baking in this sun. I'm I'm going to be a well done steak by the time I get to right. this arena. Not only are you drenched in sweat, but the 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 bottom of your shoes is now goo oh. as well by the time you get to your destination. Yeah, you can't stand in one spot for too long or else you start sticking to the ground. True. Yeah. So it's the true. play was to walk there in shorts and a t-shirt, change in the bathroom. That was the that was the <laughs> play. A veteran yeah. move right there. That's, that's what I know. Those like I learned that the second day. <laughs> Uh, so, shouts to everybody that's out there in the Summer League. Yes. Shouts to AJ Lawson, Stay who just well. had a birthday. Stay safe. Day. We're talking about players that need to prove the most. We talked about Clay Thompson. I think he's got the most to prove on the Dallas Mavericks to himself and to others. I think Kyrie Irving, though, low key, has a lot to prove because think about how last season ended. And I know it can be difficult to think about it, but something happened in Boston for him. And maybe it's just him and one team, this one team. Maybe it's just him, this one arena, this one city. You only play there, what, maybe once a year, twice, (laughs) twice if you Mm -hmm. make the finals. But I think that was some that was something where you go, oh man, that is a I have a big question about what happened there and what happened with with him in that. Was it literally just a mental block where he couldn't get past it? Because his numbers in those in those games were striking. Like they they really, it really was. Uh, something that held, held the Mavericks back. If he was better, we may be talking about this finals a little differently than a five-game series where it was disappointing and the Mavs really didn't seem like they were in it that much. I, I think you're right. It's a great point, and it, what disappointing is the word. 
I continue to use surprise, you know, surprising too. Cause I, you kept thinking he, he would snap out of it. Uh, okay. Give him a game, give him two. And then it was like, gosh, this is, this is really something he's in. He's, he's, you know, really, really struggling with this matchup. And um, now he's got the broken hand in the yeah. off season, um, you know, and, and he put out uh, the post about, you know, this is sort of his way now to, to, to be told I've got to really step away from the game to really heal, whether it's, you know, whether he means with the hand or with the, with the, you know, mental side of it, who knows? So I, who knows if he ran out of gas? I mean, you know, he played a lot this year. That was actually great. Um, That was actually something we were really happy about, but to have been available for a lot of regular season games and then a very as deep a playoff run as you can have, um, was there something to that? And then at the, you know, the end being, literally your toughest opponent, your kryptonite, it appears, you know, literally, right. And so I, I, I agree. I would love to see him be able to come back and um, have some redemption from that as well. Kyrie stepping away from the game. Is that something that we, do we really, do we really want that? <laughs> um, but <laughs> you like I wonder, busy? is that what you're saying? I, you know, do, is it just Boston? That that's kind of my question. Is like, what does he have to prove? Is it is it literally just that opponent, or is there something with you know the the stage that he was on? But he played he played well in the two home games, yeah. which is just just right. it was just a really weird thing. And I think there's there's something there where like I, I bet Kyrie comes back and goes, I've got to get us back because I, I feel responsible for us not being closer or even winning the finals or, or anything like that. And so I'm, I'm curious what, what he thinks specifically about what he has to prove. He probably would not admit any of that or say that he has anything to prove, but uh, to me, I, I think he does. The, well, the I next, like that. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No. Yeah. The next one, I think that somebody that has something to prove is somebody that, that you brought up when we were talking about this yeah. is, uh, is Quentin Grimes. He's kind of been billed as the third acquisition. It's Clay Thompson. Everybody's talking about Clay Thompson. And then it's, oh, Najee Marshall's kind of like a sneaky good pickup. And then it's Quentin Grimes. Oh yeah. They got Quentin Grimes too. And I think he has something to prove this season. Oh, I totally agree. I'm actually really intrigued by this. Um, I'm intrigued by him. I'm intrigued by this move because this is, you know, a young player, still young. Um, and he came in and really quickly earned a good reputation. People talked a lot about what, you know, so much potential for a bright future. He earned a lot of respect around the league really quickly. Mm-hmm. And he, he was doing it in a tough place to play. You know, he's in New York. He's with Tom Thibodeau, who's, you know, a really hard coach, especially on young players. And he ends up being like a key, you know, what looks like a key building block um, for that Knicks team. And then he turns into like a key trade piece for them. Um, and, you know, they end up moving him. And now it feels like he's at this really pivotal moment in his career. Um, and again, it's why sometimes I think, you know, Nico Harrison's really smart about getting guys at the right moment yes. in their career, because now he wants to prove that he's a key rotation player for a championship level team. Um, and I think that there's, you know, there's so much that can come from what he brings plus defender. Everybody's excited about that. And he talked about how, um, you know, in college he played for Kelvin Sampson in Houston yeah. And talking about Tibbs in New York, like you can't get on the court if you aren't going to just be a hard nosed <laughs> defender, right? Are you so willing to play been, 48 minutes? Then no, then right. you, can't, you can't play for me. <laughs> you know, the whole time. And so you know he's going to be a hard nosed defender. You know that that is going to be something that he brings. Um, but I was also interested in the fact that he had just, last year was really weird for him. Yeah. You know, he had, in the second year in New York, he had earned his way into being a starter. Um, I mean, he started the majority of his games, his second year in the season in New York, and he had a really good year. And then he went into the off season. He wanted to work really hard on his shooting. I remember hearing him talk about, uh, I'm working with JJ Redick and, you know, I, I'm going to get, I'm going to have, you know, um, I'm going to kind of get all my tools so I can be a bigger, uh, a bigger asset on the offensive end too. And then like things just kind of were a little wonky for him through the year and he lost his confidence. Um, in fact, he said he felt like each shot was like a hundred pounds of pressure on mm. him, you know, and if you didn't make it, you were getting pulled from the game. So there, then he gets traded to Detroit. You know, it's kind of where you go to disappear in the league. He's got to be so happy. He isn't there long-term. Right. 
And now you end up here and you've got this really interesting role. Like he's not going to be a starter. Um, and, and that's where he was really flourishing with the Knicks. Right. So how, is he going to be able to uh, earn enough minutes sort of like, you know, Derek Jones Jr. did with his defense, like prove right. what you can do defensively and then, you know, kind of, uh, you know, show what else you can bring on the offensive side of things. Um, that's I, I really find it interesting to see like his career path and where he is, what he brings um, and how maybe this is the, the, again one of those situations like right place, right time for him. Yeah, it's a move where Nico like, continued to keep this team young too, which is, which is interesting. Like you get Clay, who is now the, the oldest ma- the oldest Maverick, but then you you also turn Tim Hardaway Jr. into Quinn Grimes. It keeps them young. It keeps their youth movement building. It adds him. And I think I'm very high on this move. I, I think that he is an upgrade on Josh Green. I think that he will come in and he's got something to prove. Like you said, to he can still be a starter rotation player on a potential contender. That Knicks team that he started, what was it, 66 out of 71 games or something like that was a 47 win team with Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. And it was a, it was a playoff team. He was a starter on a playoff team for all, basically a whole season. And that's, that's proof to me that he can, he can do that on, you know, on the Mavericks. And you said the Pistons were the place you go to disappear. Well, ask Kyrie Irving to go from New York to Dallas. The pressure level is just so much lower on it. There's not the scrutiny as much. Uh, you know, we the media are much nicer than apparently than, than New York yeah. New York media is according to Kyrie. And uh and so yeah, I, I think this could be a spot like you just said, him in the right spot in his in his career, ready to prove something, still, you know, willing to come off the bench, willing to do what do what it takes. And he's gonna be coming off the bench for Clay Thompson. Like, you know, what are you what are you gonna try and in, in say that you're better than Clay Thompson or that you deserve a spot more than Clay Thompson. And so I think that's a really good spot for him to be in instead of what happened in New York, where his spot got taken by Dante DiVincenzo kind of a peer. Mm-hmm. There was the weird, you know, there's the weird Villanova thing where that's cool from everybody on the outside looking in. But I wonder from the, like the inside, is it like, oh, okay, now it's just this club of Villanova guys. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on, on, on the outside yeah. of it. Yeah. So yeah, Quinn Grimes absolutely has some stuff to prove coming up. Let's talk about, Najee Marshall, what does he got have to prove for the Mavericks? Another new addition. And then PJ Washington. Dana thinks PJ has something to prove. I'm interested to hear what she's going to say about that. Coming up. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Shut it down. Oh, Let's go. All right, Dana. We're talking about players that need to prove the most for the Dallas Mavericks next season. Clay Thompson. Absolutely. I think Kyrie Irving will have something to prove next season. Uh, Quentin Grimes has something to prove coming from Detroit where, where players go to disappear to now to, to Dallas, <laughs> where he's going to be back in, in the spotlight and on a, on a playoff team. Najee Marshall is coming into the Mavericks. And I think he's got something to prove where he's getting the biggest, he's got the biggest payday of his career so far. He's really not made a lot of money until now for, for the Mavericks. He has a chance to me if the clay thompson thing doesn't go as well as we hope it will if all the things that you said about clay you know playing defense well enough hitting enough shots bringing enough to the offense if that doesn't go very well or if the mavs realize all right we still need the dirty work wings we still need those those two guys playing where you know we have that that set up with him and pj then i think Najee marshall could could earn a lot of minutes closing minutes i don't know the kid will make the starting move uh, maybe that wouldn't matter, but I think Najee Marshall has a lot to prove to the Ma- to himself, to the Mavericks, and that he is, you know, a rotation player on a, on a contending team. Well, and the fact too that the way in which he comes in is at the beginning of the off season, you heard Nico say, you know, Derek Jones Jr. is priority one and won it, and then all of a sudden that that's gone. And oh, by the way, no, 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 that we're not doing that. But we love Najee, right? And we we're so excited we got him. And you're like, okay. Okay, hold on. Let me wrap my brain around this. So now he's kind of having to um, come in, I guess, as priority one. It looked like it was. You're filling what was, yeah. you know, the spot and the the minutes and the role of a guy who was priority one for the Mavericks. But the good news is, this is, you know, a great player. This is exactly what you need for this team. He's the perfect kind of um, unassuming. Like I don't need. I, I don't need you to run plays for me. I'm here to do the dirty work. I want to, I want to hustle. I want to scrap. I wasn't drafted. I'm, I'm going to, you know, and his, his thing he's going to prove is that even with the payday, I'm still going to play like that. 
Because you know when a guy is trying to make the, he's trying to prove he belongs. He's trying to prove he deserves that big payday. Yeah. Everybody's uber motivated, right? Well, now you got it. So, but he doesn't at all seem a guy that is ever going to take that his foot off the pedal in that regard. He seems like a guy who just loves to get out there, make his presence felt on the court, doing whatever it takes. And I think he's super versatile and they're going to be really, you know, really happy to be able to ask him to do a number of different things. Um, he's going to leave it on the court, I think, every single time he's out there. Um, and you know, that's, I'm really excited to see that for him. And, but I do think he, he's just going to have to kind of come in and say, you know, uh, this, this is a, a really good move that was worth them pivoting for. Yeah. He's good at a lot of different things. I'm talented at everything to be honest. I, do, <laughs> I love that. I do it all, so you name it, I'm good at it. So it's one of my favorites. How, how great is that to have too. that? I'm talented have that at confidence. everything. confidence. I know. As soon as he has a good game, I'm just going to drop. I'm talented at everything. Too. <laughs> so good. You think PJ Washington has something to prove? This is another player that you brought up when we were going back and forth. What do you think PJ has to prove? Well, I think for him, you know, when he came in, he was asked to do a lot. Mm -hmm. They traded for him and he had like the biggest adjustment to me because it's like, hey, on one end, you need to be Derek Jones Jr. On the other, you need to be Clay Thompson. I mean, it, you know, I mean, basically that, and, and we need you to, uh, we need you to defend like you've never defended in the league before. Uh, you need to prove to everybody you can do that. And then by the way, at, you know, going into this off season, we, we want to ask you to be more of a scorer. We're going to need more points from you. We want to see more of your offensive game. So I think there is a lot for him. I mean, it's a guy that was a, a 12th pick. He was a high pick in the draft and for his, you know, when you go to a, to a, a franchise, that's not a winning franchise for a lot of years, the expectations kind of, you know, start to be buried a little bit on, on what, you know, people thought of uh, that you could bring. Well, this is the moment to shine for him. You know, I mean, you've got a whole off season now, you know, where you're going to be, you know, you're in a great place and they, and you know, they love you and they want you to be a big part of everything, but he did have one of his worst, shooting seasons if you just take the the months that he was with the Mavs yeah those were not good percentages uh they really were I'm glad he had some really he had some big games along the way that were awesome but truly like and I know he's working to retool that shot there they they have some adjustments they're wanting him to make to help raise his his percentages especially with the three-point shot just can more consistency I think if that's the one thing I want him to want to prove is that he can do what they're asking on, on the defensive end. And it's a lot, and then be a more consistent offensive threat. And really that three point shot, he can just get that to be more consistent. Now that's not easy. Like that's a lot to want to do, but when we know he stands on business, that's this right. guy's not going to back away. He's not going to no. back away from proving anything. He is going to have, so many open threes in that starting lineup. I mean, so many. You're not going to leave Lively rolling. You're not going right. to leave Luca or Kyrie. You're not going to leave Clay Thompson. Clay. Right? Still can't leave me open. No, correct. You cannot do that. And like you said, he played 30 games for the Mavericks in the regular season, or just about, and he shot 31% from three. And I think he's going to want to prove. I don't know if you've been on Twitter this much. If you haven't, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of everyone <laughs> listening that if you haven't been on there are all these Thunder accounts that are just like Thunder fan accounts. You've got Westbrook in your profile picture or who, or SGA or whoever. They all just say, oh, the Mavs only won because P.J. Washington got hot. They had a 30% a three-point shooter get, you know, go crazy from three, and that's the, it's an aberration. It's the only reason why they, they won. And I don't think he has anything to prove to those, to those troll accounts, but he does have to prove that – Hey, that wasn't just an aberration. It wasn't just, uh, you know, out of the box, like, oh, ran he gets randomly hot one time, and that's why the Mavs won that Thunder series. That he can be a reliable knockdown shooter. That, that you know, it was the 38%, 37% three point shooter he was his first two years in the NBA. He is that guy and not the guy he's been the last couple of years where he shot 34, 32% you know, from three. And I'm, I'm curious how he comes in with that retooled shot and how he looks with all these open looks he's going to get. Agree. And it has to be efficient, which is not easy because there are going to be a lot of open looks, but there are not going to be a lot 
of shots overall for him because you've got Luca Kyrie and now clay, those guys are going to get the majority of the shots. So he yeah. is going to have to be able to, you know, find a way to do it efficiently, even though he's not the guy with the ball in his hand, taking, you know, 20 shots a game. It's going to be interesting to be interesting to see how he handles it and how he handles some of the pressure uh, of being that, that fifth starter where, you know, it, it, it's going to feel yeah. like what that Quentin Grimes quote. There's a lot of, of pressure, 10, 100 pounds of pressure on every yeah, single every three point that he's going to, the three pointer he's going to take. So, uh, in the comment section, let us know on YouTube. Let us know who you think has the most pressure going into next season. I'm curious what you guys have to say about that. We'll be back probably Monday night going into Tuesday for the next show. Uh, I may sneak one. I may sneak one in, but we'll we'll see. I'm going on, I'm going on vacation for the weekend. So You're go check on out. On vacation? The episode. Take a vacation, Nick. Do it. Nah, the, 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 grind it. Never, the grind never stops, Dana, <laughs> here on Locked On Mavs. We continue on with it. Go listen to the episode I had with Slightly. Go listen to the episodes with Reggie this week. Guys, thanks for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace.